Well, how you doing? It's time for another review and we got here something a little different, at least compared to what I see a lot of around here, and that is Lining Kugel's Red Lager. Now in the South, Lining Kugel's, you know, big deal in the Midwest. Um, but in the Southeast, you don't see a lot of Lining Kugel products. You'll see the Summer Shandy, uh, humorously, kind of, it's kind of funny, but you see that year round. Um, I don't believe I've ever seen original Lining Kugels. They got just a regular American adjunct lager. I've had, I wanna say they had a Bach I tried like two years ago and I thought it was pretty decent. Um, but yeah, I'm not incredibly familiar with the Lining Kugels brand, but this is their red lager. It says here, a robust red Vienna style lager. So at least right now, I'm assuming it's gonna be similar to like a Yingling. And color wise, it kind of does. Don't know if I would say this is red. Well, hmm, I don't know. There is like a little bit of a, yeah. I would call this amber. I wouldn't call it red, but um, you know, when you hold it up to the light though, yeah, screw it. That's a red lager if I ever saw one. That's pretty damn red. Um, with a darker colored head, I would go as far as to maybe say just a tad bit darker than say khaki also. Uh, you're probably wondering what's with this goofy uh, Michael Landon, Little House in the Prairie looking outfit. Got home from work, was covered in oil, didn't feel like taking a shower. Well, I'm going to, but I wanted to do this review real quick. So I just threw on an old Civil War reenactment shirt. So that explains the look. Anyway, back to the beer. Let's take a whiff. Oh, that is nice. Similar to uh, Yingling though, which not a bad thing. I, I really enjoy Yingling myself. It's probably my go-to gas station beer along with, you know, PBR, High Life, and uh, Mordello. Coronas are at uh, Dos Equis, you know. But uh, no, this definitely reminds me of, uh, of Yingling. Let's see the ABV here, 4.9. I wanna look, I'm gonna check really quick the ABV for Yingling. I wanna say Yingling is like four, six, four, seven, maybe four, eight. Alrighty. Thank God you cannot see my screen because I do not know if I can spell Yingling off the top of my head. Thankfully, Google's got me covered here. ABV. 4.5, so this is a tad higher than Yingling. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a swallow. Hmm. I gotta compare it to Yingling. I would actually love to do a side-by-side. -side. I might, I might grab a Yingling tomorrow and take it home to compare it. But anyway, while I think over this, we have a little story. Story time here on the show. Uh, Lenny's Red was once a staple in our family of beers and a favorite to many. We remastered the recipe in our pilot brewery by dry hopping with locally grown Wisconsin hops. This recipe twist will remind you of the original while enhancing the aroma, resulting in a perfectly balanced beer. Prost. That's from the Line and Kugel family. And I'm going to take a quick look, actually, and look that up as well, like I said. I'm not all that familiar with the Line and Kugel line of beers. So, Lenny's. I, I wish I could compare this, but Line and Kugel's red lager, yep. Uh, it appears the ABV is the same, uh, so I'm assuming that the only thing changed in the recipe is the hops. Speaking of which, there's definitely some floral hop notes, which is nice because when you get darker beers like this, which I love dark malty beers, but some of them really lean into the malt which is fine for me, but a lot of people want a more round beer. They want a little bit of a hop bite, even though some people might not know they enjoy hops. They might not know exactly what causes this kind of weird flavor, 
but well, it's hops and it definitely rounds out the beer. And this is a great example of that. Um, it has definitely the malty biscuitiness of like maybe, honestly, with that little bit of a hot bite, rye bread, um, I would say would be a good comparison. But yeah, you got that biscuitiness, that maltiness, a little toasty almost, very brown bread, but then just you have that little bit of a floral hop bite with just a tad bit of bitterness. Now, if I had to, if I had to guess, I'm not gonna Google it because I've noticed that my typing skills are, well, for lack of a better term, shit. And uh, no, you didn't come here just to watch me type and misspell words on Google. Come here to watch me drink a gosh dang beer. Anyway, so Ch -ch -ch Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, da da da, da 4.9. They do not have the IBUs. I did not assume they would. Most uh, adjunct loggers, even though this isn't, it's a, you know, a red logger, but most of your companies that make adjunct loggers don't tend to show the uh, IBUs. But if I was just to guess, even though I mentioned it is noticeable, I would probably say 18, 20, maybe on the high end, 25. No, no, not even 25. That's way too high. Probably 18, if I was to guess. Uh, definitely, like I said, a round beer. And for comparison, I think Budweiser is like a 10 or 12 IBUs. You know, so you're probably sitting here thinking an eight point difference. It's not a big deal. You can notice it. You can definitely notice this. Um, and this is definitely more hoppy than you would see in traditional gas station beer. Which is one thing I like about Lighting Kugel. I've said that I'm kind of ignorant to the brand as a whole. But I like brands like Lining Kugel, and I've already mentioned it a hundred times so far, but Yingling, um, they produce solid beer that's, you know, reasonably priced. It's not as expensive as some craft beer, but, you know, a tad more expensive than, you know, a Miller High Life or a, a Budweiser, but still reasonably priced, and they make different styles of beer while still being approachable, you know, in today's craft market, which it has changed a lot since when I first started doing beer reviews back in my grandparents' basement when I was like 18, 19. But craft, the craft beer industry chases trends. Back then, it was like, oh my God, who can make the most bitter, hoppy IPA? And now you see more sours, more fruit beers, things like that. But I like brands like Lining Kugel and Yingling, and even though it is technically a craft uh, brand, but um, Sam Adams as well, that makes more traditional style beers, <clears throat> excuse me, but makes a variety of them. Because that uh, maybe I'm biased, but that's mostly what I drink. I like older European style beers. I'm not sitting here chasing down a double, IP, double milkshake IPA with freaking, I don't know, <laughs> with the triple dry hopped with hop extract added on and it's 85 IBUs and no, that's just honestly disgusting. Every time I say 80 IBUs, it reminds me of this one beer, um, Terrapin Hops Kushner. If that's your kind of beer, good for you. I hope you enjoy it. I'm glad you like it. But for me, I honestly, there's all kinds of stuff I'd rather drink over that. It, I remember I'd have to smoke like three cigarettes to get through one of them beers. But this, on the other hand, I don't need a single cigarette for this one. This is just great on its own. Anyway, we've got a last little chug here. So I guess we need to rate this thing. So for the style, and I've mentioned this in the past, but to reiterate, when I, when I review a beer and when I rate a beer, I try to do it within the style and the price range. You know, you don't, people on Top Gear, or car and driver, they don't sit here and go, well, we have a Yugo. Um, and to compare it to a Porsche 911, it's complete shit. No, you wouldn't do that. You would compare, say, a Yugo to a Ford Festiva, and the Yugo would still be a complete piece of shit, but it'd be a piece of shit within its own category. You know, it's just like you don't, 
you wouldn't compare a Mustang to a F-350. I mean, if you did that, then the next thing you know, you, you look at it and go, well, my goodness, it's F-350, it's so heavy. Uh, it takes all, you know, it's co more costly to maintain. It doesn't handle as good. Uh, take a longer zero to 60, to, which I don't know. I mean, them, them six, seven power strokes can get it. Anyway, I digress. But back to my original point, I guess, if you're gonna rate something, rate it in its style. Just one more example. If you're talking about video games, you wouldn't compare a Atari 2600 or a Commodore 64 or a freaking Fairchild Channel F to a PlayStation 4. There's no comparison there. And it's not fair to either thing you're comparing to do that. So for the style, for the price point, maybe I'm just in a really good mood because I just got off work, but I'm giving this an eight. I, Which I will say my... My rating scale can jump because there's plenty of beers I really enjoyed that I was like, ah, oh, it's a seven. But I'm gonna give this an eight. Um, I mean, honestly, if you like Yingling, you'll love this. Very similar, which of course is the same style, so that's to be expected. Uh, it's got a good hot presence for for the style while still maintaining a nice malty, biscuity, toasty, whatever you want to call it. I feel like anytime I, I review a dark beer, I'm just saying the same adjectives. Um, which a lot of these darker beers do taste similar. A lot of these darker styled beers do, but it's those little subtleties that make a big difference. You know, comparing a Bach to a Dunkel, you're going to get a lot of, a lot of similar notes, but they're going to be a little bit different. And it's hard, at least for me, maybe I'm just not a good order, or, 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 or I don't know. I don't know if that's the correct term. Probably not. I might have just made up a new word. I'm not good with my words, what I'm trying to say. But, um, but it's this, you know, if you sit two beers of similar styles next to each other and you drink them side by side, you'll get those differences. You'll be able to pick them up really well. And I've just realized I've been rambling this whole time. Anyway, 8 out of 10. It's a very, very, very good beer for the style. And uh, definitely glad I saw this at Food Line. I'm assuming it's limited run. But I'm definitely going to pick this one up again. I might grab another 12-pack this weekend. Anyway, I have a review I'm going to upload in a little bit for, that I recorded like two weeks ago. I also am going to go ahead and I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag. I got both of the Fosters I plan on reviewing. I wanted to review them already, but I just didn't feel like drinking, you know, two quarts of beer in one sitting. So, might do that tomorrow. Anyway, 8 out of 10. Like, rate, subscribe if you care to. <clears throat> uh, can't forget to kill your local pedophile. And, of course, have a good night and a pleasant tomorrow.